Hey everybody, welcome to episode 138 of the Bono Podcast, where we talk all things Blood Bowl. Jingle. Welcome back. I'm Ben, and once again, I'm joined by Blood Tide Ben BT. How are we doing today? Hola, very good. Very, very good indeed. Uh, riding on the high of Monday Night Stream, which went very well, I think. I think so too. And also joining us, also from Monday Night Stream, we've got Ian Triple Power Triplo Trips. How are you doing? Very good. Also riding on the high of rolling well two Mondays in a row. So uh, I'm not enjoying I'm... it. I'm gonna not enjoying it. <laughs> this no. was an absolute highlight with somebody commenting in the in the chat very early on, like, who is this person pretending to be trips? <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Ow! You did get one double one at one point, but otherwise your your dice roll seemed almost almost yeah. normal. Oh, I rolled one re-roll, one re-roll. Um, but for once I actually had re-rolls left to use and I can't believe how long I'm hanging on to rerolls at the moment. So yeah, that was very a day. that was very swaggerty braggarty of you at one point to be like, oh yeah. no, it's the end of the half, and I've got seven rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben's just there, a dribbling gnome mess. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the stream, I do wholeheartedly recommend you go and watch it, and then make sure you join us next Monday as well for more gnomes. Games Workshop dropped the stats for gnomes. Not quite the entire roster, but most of it. So these guys came round. Trips brought a wonderful PC to fix some of the tech issues. Ben fine-tuned it and then painted up a little gnome team. And we got a gnome game. Oh, that was what that why. Oh, okay, cool. Um, um, sorry, there is a screw that's just fallen off the desk as the desk has now come apart from the wall. <laughs> that's a significant issue. Um, yes. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes we've got to play gnomes there's the screw it's just popped out okay <laughs> keep calm and carry on it'll be fine uh we played gnomes we got to see how the gnome roster worked we played it against a norse team and now what we're going to do today ben is yeah we're going to be talking about the gnome team and our just general first impressions of them um i think maybe not quite as what we were expecting um before playing through them um i definitely have some things to say on that but ultimately they're pretty fun spoiler alert so <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely 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 uh all right tell you what let's jump straight into it okay let's roll so what we've got here is the gnome roster uh if you're watching on youtube you're gonna be able to see graphics if you're listening don't worry about it we'll read everything out and we'll just be talking about things so first things first what we don't know is we don't know re-rolls and we don't actually know the amount of positionals a team can take, with the exception of the treeman, which is not two because they put it in an article somewhere. Um, so the gnome roster will be filled out by line gnomes, not to X, beast masters, not to two, illusionists. Oh no, we don't actually know. We're assuming not to two uh, because there's yeah. two in the box, um, and the same of the woodland fox and the treeman. We've got not to two treeman. We know that bit. Everything else, we're kind of assuming it's going to be naught to two of the other positionals because that's what comes in the box, and that's kind of how Games yeah. Workshop does things these days. Isn't that about right? And it's 14 yeah. in the box as well, so 14 and two trees. That's your maximum roster, it sort of, for once makes sense. I'm... Yeah, I can't think of any positional they've done since for a long time it's been zero to one because of that reason. Zero to one so or, or zero to four. Um, yeah, there's been some zero to four, like corn, corn? gores come to mind. Corn gores, I think, is yeah. the, the only one that they've done. Actually, that's probably, probably overlooking something. But from playing it, or watching you play it, Ben, it feels like these are all going to be naught to do. It, yeah, that seems reasonable. feels right, like because you, you genuinely want more. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. you, I think you just genuinely want more. But it's a really interesting roster. Now, we do have the costs. What we don't have is the cost of the re-rolls trips. So we went with 60k because that's what halflings are. What are your what are your thoughts on the re-rolls for the gnome team? I think having played with them and with the Master Chef clarification, I wouldn't be surprised if they are 50k. Because mm. it feels like 
gnomes will need a fair few re-rolls and definitely on day one will need even more than you can buy <laughs> yeah so, i agree I, so, like they need them so much more than the other stunties do so when we did the we uh when we did the game on monday and i think we'll probably use the same roster for next week as well um we ended up with two woodland foxes two illusionists two beast masters two trees uh enough gnomes to take us to 13 so i think five gnomes and uh, we took four re-rolls uh, based on the fact that if they are 60k we can afford four re-rolls if they're 50k you got an option there of yeah. taking five even and if they're 70k then you take three we kind of just thought well, actually it doesn't massively matter um one extra re-roll you know in a tournament environment sure but when you're trying out a team, quite frankly, the more re-rolls, the better, because we actually got to see, <laughs> in some cases, what some of the players did. Although Trips was uh, on an absolute mission with this one, <laughs> which he did against me when I was playing Ivan when the Norse teams came out as well. Oh, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, let's, let's not see any of that. <laughs> yeah, continuing my trend of, oh, it's a new piece, let's just kill it. <laughs> How's it played? Don't know, it didn't stay on the pitch long enough. Um, right, now we've got some rules, we've got some bits. Uh, the Illusionist has a new skill called Trickster, and the Woodland Fox has a new skill called My Ball. So the Illusionist, having the skill Trickster, is going to end up being referred to as the Trickster, I think, and I'm fine with that. That's probably what I'm going to do. So Trickster rule. When this player is about to be hit by a block action or special action that replaces a block action, with the exception of a block action caused by the ball and chain move special action, before determining how many dice are rolled, they may be removed from the pitch and placed in any, un uh, any unoccupied square adjacent to the player performing the block action. The block action then takes place as normal. If the player using this trait is holding the ball and places themselves in the opposition end, end zone, the block action will still be fully resolved before any touchdown is scored. So, to summarise, if you're being blocked, or stabbed, or chainsawed, something that replaces a block action, just before you do the maths to determine how many dice, your trickster gets to place himself next to the attacker. So kind of reverse sidestep is the best way to consider it. So you're kind of sidestepping before the block based on the opponent. So you can literally bamf, you know, go full nightcrawler and just appear the other side of the attacker. Now, Two tricksters on the roster. The, the costing was quite, the costing is quite interesting. We'll come to that in a minute. But I mean, trips, getting to play against the trickster. Now we ran Norse because we thought Block would be good against Wrestle and Frenzy will be good against the trickster. What are your thoughts? It definitely makes you think because you can't just wade on in for the, the Block or the Blitz on the trickster because he literally could go anywhere. So you. You're thinking where to be, where to where to block from, where the opponent coach is going to move. It's it's an added complication. It's sort of a bit of a theme with gnomes that you look at where they are and you don't know where they're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I I like that. I mean, it does. It fits the 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 little bits of fluff that we've seen from gnomes already, right? Is that yeah? yeah. They're, 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 they're in law. They're meant to be annoying and uh, unpredictable. And that that's, does seem accurate, especially with this player. It's very annoying, very unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like sidestep, where it's kind of like you already have some knowledge with sidestep because you know the player's going down, and you know like you can kind of control it. You can kind armor. of control it. You can, yeah. You kind of limit where it can go, yeah. even with that. And yeah, because it's done after the block result, it's like okay, I know this piece is lying down, so it doesn't really matter. But with this, it's like this player is a very good chance of still being standing, especially if they get dodge. And you're just like, this this is good. this can screw me. And like you say, with Frenzy, that's super dangerous. I think blocking these pieces as Frenzy is terrifying. And you've got to be really careful if the trickster's the ball carrier, because you could go from, I'm blitzing the ball carrier because I want to get them down, to I've accidentally freed them up and put them two squares closer to the end zone. How on earth did I manage to do that? <laughs> yeah. And they can control themselves themselves away from a second block. Like you can't even chain push them around because they can just be like, nah. That is that is something that is um is massive. And and chat picked up on this in the game, uh, Ben, when you were running them, is the, is the tricksters are just perfectly fine on the sideline, as and the foxes are pretty fine on the sideline as well. Them having actual sidestep and the tricksters just being able to nightcrawler themselves the other side of the opponent, just like super leap themselves. Yeah. 
um, is really interesting. So it's a really interesting skill. There's uh, a few people have sort of said would be nice to see this skill be a proper skill in the future. I dis I actually disagree with that. I think this is this is this is their thing. This is their thing. I think. I, I like. I I actually I, I know a lot of people dislike the trend of adding new traits. They see it as bloat. I disagree because I think when they're limited to a team, it gives the team flavor. It yeah. gives them uniqueness. A bloat would be if everyone could do it. I would get that. I um, think I think hit and yeah. run from the Amazons. I think that making that a skill. I think that's fine. Yeah. But this, yeah, yeah, this, work, th yeah. this, you're right. This is too thematic. Yeah. Um, yes, and I agree a hundred percent. This is a law thing, and it's it fits well with that. So it fits in as a trait. If you put it in as a skill, well, you'd give it to half the blitzers in the in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Make it a passing skill, then no one can take it. And the other skill they've added, the new skill or trait, as it is, is my ball, which I think is potentially the best skill they put in Blood Bowl forever. Uh, a player with this trait may not willingly give up the ball when in possession of it. May not make pass actions, hand off actions, or use any other skill or trait that would allow them to relinquish possession of the ball. The only way they can lose possession of the ball is by being knocked down, place prone, falling over, or by the effect of a skill trait or special rule of an opposing model, e.g., strip. Ball. So, gentlemen, may I say that we should start the conversation here by um, have either of you minced around on the Blood Bowl community in the last 24 hours? Yes, <laughs> I saw some bits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm the discourse on this is just something else. <laughs> it's, it, right, the trolling of this has been really entertaining because someone's like, so if a fox scores, uh, is the game over? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that that was the one that really made me laugh. It was like, th does the fox score never get the ball up, and therefore the league ends there and there? <laughs> yeah. It's like, have you ever tried to get a ball of a dog? It's like it's not going to happen. <laughs> so they've they've introduced this really interesting um, trickster skill, which adds flavour to the gnomes, and then they have introduced an even more flavourful trait with the my ball thing. And having had dogs, like this is just the meme of uh, no throw. Uh, no 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 take only throw like it's just yeah. it's not it's just it's just absolutely superb um i did see one great thing in chat as we were watching someone was like oh maybe it should have just been animosity four plus instead like like oh animosity six plus um however i do not hate this rule i think it's brilliant but ben having run them yeah. w was this of a concern to you much yeah, actually. Oh, okay. I didn't think it would be. I didn't think it would be, but it was. Because where they are a stunty team, I'm sure seasoned stunty coaches don't rely on the old throw teammate. But there were outs, I think, in the game we played where my fox was a bit, a bit in trouble. And getting the ball free could have been done with a handoff and then maybe to a... The, the, the scoring opportunity, essentially, could have been done if I had the option to hand off to a player who could then be thrown or a player who was in scoring range. But when it's like down to the Fox, that gives your opponent like a bit of breathing room because they guarantee that that cannot happen. Whereas any other player, if there's someone in scoring range, you have to be wary of that player. Um, so yes, there was an op there was a time where Ian had a particularly good offense onto my ball and I had to think of a way that I could score because I could only do it with the fox. Um, yeah, so it did come up, and it's it's worth thinking about, and it's worth thinking about just not running the ball on the fox. Well, I think yeah. we we kind of talked about this in the debrief after the match, didn't we? Where I I yeah. think I think not not necessarily the correct way to do it, but maybe the way you start out by doing it is using the tricksters as your kind of. I'm good. I'm gonna say throwers. I know it's because they got passing three plus, so they kind of fit the thrower role. But just as the yeah. ball collector, and then you can keep those two foxes nearby. Because one thing you did say, Ben, either during the game or after the game, is like using them as just long ranged two plus plus support pieces to get exactly yeah. where you want them to be. But you can then just you know check down. You can even roll a bad bad terrible random on a skill up and get dump off and then you could even dump off with the worst skill in the game to the foxes <laughs> i can see the smile yeah. trips you know and what well, my point is you keep a fox close worst case scenario you know it's like cheeky three plus quick pass to the fox if you can't hand off to them 
Um, and then, I mean, one thing I will say about the Fox is as a tiny ginger gutter runner, movement seven, edge two plus with stun T, they are gone. There's a two plus catch, which I'm a big fan of, and then a two plus infinity dodge, which is which is just inarguably delicious. Yeah. I think what you said about the uh, the assist pieces is also very key because there was definitely a moment in our game where... I had some guard pieces moved in and I completely misjudged like the distances and the, the great place they needed to be. And just having the fox free would have just really helped. Like having a fox there just to just to tag a guy so he's not providing assists is valuable and they can go anywhere. So now yeah. from for playing on the other side, like trips, playing against the foxes, I mean are we are we are we lightly seasoning, baking for twenty five minutes? You you had your chance. <laughs> Well, it, because it's by far and away the fastest piece on the roster, it's you, you you looking at it going, oh, it can definitely go go a lot of places that um, other gnomes could not reach. Uh, it's like that famous beer. It will reach other places a normal gnome cannot get to. Um, and so when you've got the ball, you're definitely aware of this the space that the fox can take up in terms of that. But if it's out on its own and you've got the ball, then you can just try and have Fox for dinner. When it's got the ball, but I think Ben made a really good point. When it has the ball, you know that that's the piece with the ball. It, so it might be a small ginger gutter runner, but it can't hand off to its other small ginger gutter runner. And therefore, you are at seven to nine squares you've got to cover as opposed to 14 to 18 squares. And that does make a big difference that you can then look to isolate the fox and actually its speed hurts it there because it can only go at the speed of the other gnomes or get out on its own. Mm. Yeah, it's a definite launch pad piece, which yeah. I think you have to, yeah, but you've got to treat them as a catcher, I think, rather, yeah. than, rather than a runner, which there's or not very, or, always or, a huge difference. Yeah, or very valid that slow sort of get up to the just over the halfway line create a small gap by doing something and then literally run for the hills with the fox um but as we saw on monday night if you're just a couple of squares short it can go badly wrong yes yeah i think foxes are going to be a very highly uh, kicked in player right let's have a chat through the pieces that we've seen on the roster let me get the team graphic up there i there we go that'll do so uh this is the team uh team guide layout that i used for the um the sunday speculation stream where chat and i got together and we, we talked about uh what we thought the team was going to be i've overlaid it with what we do know uh, but everything else i don't know i put a question mark on it so starting with the gnome linemen because we've actually got the stats from there 40k a piece uh movement five strength two edge three plus passing four plus armor seven plus same as a halfling, but the difference is no dodge. They've got jump up, right stuff, stunty, and wrestle. So rump up, right stuff, stunty. Like Ben said, a really key thing about these guys on the roster is they are the only things that can fly. A um, yeah. couple of other things, a couple of other speculative things we put on there is uh, skills. Agility on pass, agility on primary would make sense, and general on secondary would make sense. I think that's just based off halflings. Uh, and also, put these guys as a suggestion in College of Life. Um, I would prefer them to be in College of Shadow, but I just think that's the way it's going to go. It doesn't hugely matter, but that's a, that's a maybe. The point is that they are 40k a piece, which is expensive for a stunty, and they don't have dodge, which is an interesting point for stunty so this i think is going to build up the most of the conversation because a lot of the other pieces are just built off this template which i think is wonderful when you're designing a team when you're putting a team together i think what you want is the thing and then everybody else to do a slight variation of the thing and the thing here is that they can go three plus into anywhere but you better hope you roll well ben we're gonna yeah. s let's start with let's start with the fact that they don't have dodge. Let's let's do the let's do the let's do the bad bit first. They don't have dodge. They're stunty, but they don't have dodge. How did that feel? So dangerous. <laughs> like stunties feel like you can you really can just squeeze through. 
but here, even with four rerolls, it was just awful. <laughs> like yeah. it, feeling like you have to roll, yeah, you because know, you, you sometimes you've got to play it like a stunty word. You've got to go yeah. through the tackle zones. Like you've got a mesh to get through, or you need to go assist your friends. And when you need to bring in assist to get two dice blocks and things, it, it's it's essential. Yeah. And and it's very hard to do when you don't have it. I think that's the key that because of the strength, you are desperately trying to get those assists in place. Mm. So you've got to move around through a congested field, and when you're playing against them, when as, as starting starting without dodge, it's like yeah, sure, yeah, dodge everywhere. It, sooner or later, the dice will bite. And that's the thing you can't really pull back like either because you're still dodging. Like you can't just you're not you, getting free dodges. You're not getting free disengages. Yeah. You're incentivized to play them as a bash team, um, I feel. Which is really interesting. So we set them up against Norse because uh, we thought, okay, what's 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 good against what's good with wrestle wrestle jump up? It feels good against block. How right, guys? How did that play out? I mean, trips. You're playing Norse. You've played Norse a billion times before, um, and taking a block team where you can kind of reliably make those hits against a team that does have the wrestle bit with jump up baked in. How much of a concern was it for a tier one team like Norse? I wouldn't say it was. It, I wouldn't say it was a big concern. It was definitely annoying. <laughs> the, the the not being able to rely on block as a skill to block a player and and squish him over and jump up, even though it's just gives you three movement back. When it gives you three movement back on five pieces you've knocked over that dramatically changes the turn. I think there were two or three turns where Ben had four or five players to stand up at, at the start of the game, uh, start of the turn. Humble brag. But they're, they're all rushing around same old, same old. Although they are dodge, they are running straight into the issue there of they're dodging to get back into position. And the thing that I noticed uh, from this is just like, just how awful movement five is. Like uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm unabashedly a, a Skaven fan because like even the line, the worst piece is movement seven, um, and actually just movement five when you're not just yoloing your one in nines through any tackle zone ever. Like like you know, it's basically event horizon, right? The quickest point is this, and when you're doing stunty, you're basically doing this. Um, it's it's really interesting because movement five is is trash. So I'm very glad they've got a jump up. Because that is the speed of, of, of something that rhymes with a light that starts with a significantly different letter. Um, that was something that really stuck out to me. Like I like the idea of Wrestle, I, 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 and it played out well, because just Ben, and I know you had this thought many times, because you even I think you tried it a couple of times, just the two plus dodge blitz, basically anywhere, if you've got the team rerolls to fund the dodges, having that always as an out, is wonderful it's just challenging at movement yeah. five yeah um it felt like feel like playing it felt like bad slam because <laughs> they're slow and fragile and even with jump up like it's that it's like jump up kind of compensates for the armor difference i think in a way um uh yeah it's it's weird it's weird I, I mean, we can get more into that in a minute when we talk about the other positionals. But yeah, these linemen, they're just, they're just, I don't know. I think when they get dodged, they'll be insane. Yeah. But when they don't, it's. So that's. I, I think there's one advantage of them being uh, movement five is that uh, it really brings the trees into play because the game is staying close to the trees mm. in the first few turns because the gnomes cannot run away from the trees, they do not have the pace. And if you block them and push them back one square, they're already two behind the, the tree, effectively. And bringing the trees into the conversation, one thing that I think does go brilliantly with those trees is the Gnome Beastmasters, which exactly the same stats. However, they've got one extra armor, armor 8 plus instead of 7 plus. Uh, like two in the box, so we're assuming they're 0 to 2. 55k, so 15k more than a line dude. No right stuff, but they have guard instead. So rump up guard and stunty i thought 
these guys were significantly key then. Uh, they oh. were they were kind of the Literally. focal points. I, I I think where we where we do our mixed team shenanigans, I would take gnomes just to access this player. I think they're one of the best players in the game. I, I genuinely think that. Because they're so useful. Like even without dodge, when you can spend a reroll on it. This is where the slam comparison comes in, because these guys do what they want to do, where you've got a cage dive, you got it you've you can always do it with a wrestle piece. You can get two guard on the ball and then you're just you're just laughing because <laughs> Two guard on the ball on strength three is a two die block with wrestle. So, like, just having these access, uh, having the access to just put that on is huge. I can, I can't see any any roster where you don't take however many you can of them. So, yes, if you can take two, always take two. They, I mean, imagine if these say zero to four. Imagine well, that's that why. That's so why gross. my money is just. I just. I can't. I can never. I couldn't I, uh, possibly. Can you imagine? That would be. <laughs> that would be. That would be egregious. Oh, okay. That would be <laughs> vomit inducing. Yes. <laughs> and you start with four guard. No, no, no. This will yeah. be. These guys will be naught to two. But like Trip says, it's yeah. this, this. This positional is one of those. This is two to two per every team. <laughs> yeah. Like this is that you you mm. you've got to have two. Like I would rather take the beast masters over the trees. Like the known beast masters are the first things you put on your roster. I think to yes, your to your 100%. point to your point Ben. Um. So all right. Well, turns out guard is good. So who knew? Like that yeah. was a, that was a benefit. <laughs> and being able to actually just take that three plus stunty dodge, um, into a situation does give you that. I'll admit, movement five is a bit slow, but I mean, quite frankly, as Trips has pointed this out, they're not really movement five, they're movement seven. And that means that they're all right. Then you've got the tricksters. Oh, I reckon those guys will go into, uh, I've put life, but I think beasts is probably where they head. Makes um, sense. Yeah. In fact, yeah, it makes sense. Do you know what? I think the gnome linemen, I'm good. I reckon they go into shadow. I, I don't actually reckon they do, but they should go into shadow. You're a hot take for me. I reckon College of Light. I'd take light on these guys. That would just be unnecessary. That would be ridiculous. They're shadow. They're from Uglu. They love the shadow magic. Going into light. Uh, yeah, you... Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. The, uh, well, oh, do you mean the illusionists? No, no, no. I think the illusionists are shadow. I think the linemen are light. I just, I'm just biased because College of Light is deeply uninteresting. <sighs> I just want something else other than elves. Do you it? know, I don't disagree with that. I think that's yeah. I think I think they, if they were going to fix that, then they should put a load of this stuff in College of Light, and they should put the blooming mm. goblin secret weapons into College of Shadow because that would make the Co Shadow yeah. just absolutely fantastic. Although a couple of gnome illusionists would be pretty cool. So the gnome illusionist, the tricksters, five two three plus three plus passing, seven plus armor. So halfling uh, with a bit of better passing here, fifty k. So only ten k more. Uh, jump up, stunty wrestle no right stuff again the only gnomes that can fly are muggle like poor gnomes and then you've got trickster on this one now we've already talked about trickster um but we'll bring it back round in a second based on the fact they've got better passing uh and i think the 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 the, the fatties on the halfling team have got this as well ap for primary potentially and, and general probably on a, a secondary um trickster the the, the tricksters the illusionists they are very interesting, but the trickster skill it, it, it just it it's it's brilliant. In your mind, yeah. this sets up some really wicked things. Someone frenzy blitzes me, but actually I just end up like four squares down the pitch, and it's wicked. In reality, uh, your guy's gonna probably just die. Um, which which fe which which feels like this is what happened because even though wrestle saves you from both down, the amount of pow stars that trips was throwing it was just like <laughs> oh yeah. like okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a block team to emphasize and demonstrate how the wrestle skill works and trips is like never got a proof down <laughs> they've got no dodge here we go yeah. um, <laughs> dear. Now, and I remember there was one time you did, and I chose not to use the rest because it was just yes, <laughs> with a turnover. I know. However, that was a very good. That was very good. That was a useful thing to show off. I think. Um, right, tricksters and the tricky tricks. Trickster skill. When I think you said it well. You said, 
Oh, oh, sorry. I was going to say you said it well with the um the movement thing. Oh, sorry. You carry on though. You carry on. No, I was going to say continue. when they're vanilla. What were your thoughts? So, oh, um, vanilla. God, uh, painful. Like like yeah. you said, you get do- you you get dodged out and um oh sorry, defender stumbles and you're just down. Um, and with dodge, they're basically bludge, and every time you get blocked, you get three extra movement. Yeah, and I think that's awesome. You get on the ball every time you get blocked. Because you can just go the other side of the player, get pushed back, jump up, and run off, run off whether yeah. on the floor. If you take a both down, so. Yeah. so would would you make them your MVP choice in your first game? Because I I think them getting dodge early, well, them getting dodge is one of the only ways they're ever going to survive more than two games in a row. Yes, I probably would. Yeah, I do both be, both of them and. Probably the Beastmaster. That's the thing. I, I don't know if I do two Beastmasters because Beastmasters getting dodge is also very crucial. Um, so it would be between these and the Beastmasters. I, I think yeah. two Beastmasters and one Illusionist. Um, yeah. Whichever one actually got through and scored um, because you get to six, like like BT says, you go straight for dodge. And then, yes, you, you, what you're looking at here is is I, I, I joke about Dumpoff. My, my concern with a skill like Dumpoff and Trickster is that you don't really want to be using it if you are a ball carrier like uh like it's it's just it's just risky the benefit of dodge is it is an active skill as well it's a skill that you can use to move to use to do stuff with like mm-hmm. uh, which means that your illusionist getting dodge first of all means that you've got a really solid ball carrier because you've got trickster to just absolutely upset things and even if your trickster then goes down because they've had to use wrestle or whatever the, the ball is further in the direction that you want you can use trickster potentially to move back towards your cage or to flip flop the other side right go off to the sideline and get it out yeah get it yeah. sent off just get it sent off the exactly the it, it gives you a little bit more yeah. advance but once this player who I believe is going to be the ru- the runner of the team that the, gets that dodge. You've got your three plus plus into any tackle zones, wrestle. Um, yeah. uh, do I try a hit on the ball, double push? Okay, I'm in the middle of a cage. This is a bit of a problem. Uh, your turn. You attack my trickster because it's a free block. Now I bamf two squares into a really difficult situation. Again, like it, it just goes from being a oh that's a how does this work? This is interesting. Oh never mind. I rolled a pow. Uh, into a oh this player is 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 wicked and i think yeah we haven't seen a player like this where where they've got an incentive to to get good in in a while there are players that you kind of have to grind and oh no they're really good once they get a couple of skills this is literally you take two illusionists and you just hold on until one of them gets six spp (laughs) and then yeah and then it, they start being a bit of a start. They're always in risk of dying. But like you said, Ben, once they've got, once they're Rogers, then they're they're pretty well defended, even at strength yeah. two. Yeah, very annoying. I like these. I like them because you do have to put a bit of work in. Uh, they kind of remind yeah. me of the chameleon skink in that regard. In that there's a little bit of upside, and they're the, the, the player you want to have a skill or two skills on, and they become really interesting. Yeah, and I think I think it makes. I mean, we've we've got a few players with skills that interact in the opponent's coach turn, but these players genuinely feel like if you are the gnome coach, you are playing in your opponent's turn as well, because you're always thinking, right? Well, depending on where he puts everyone, when he tries to block that trickster, where am I going? So I think it's you consistently game planning. Um. The votes are saying Vamp Vampires have got a pretty chunky lead ready for Monday Night Blood Bowl. Uh, oh, okay. So we'll see. Oh. We'll, we'll potentially see a Varg um, because some more wrestle stuff is, is, is always good to have. Um, so I, I, I've got to say, each of, these posi- each of these players so far have not been chaff they've not been boring they've, they've they've been interesting there's there's decisions there's benefits and there are negatives to it which is why so far i'm really enjoying what gnomes are giving us and then tiny ginger gutter runners so in the box you get two woodland foxes you've got to assume that because these guys are amazing there will only be two and you've got to kind of assume they're going to be life or beasts probably beasts um movement seven strength two 
Edge 2 Plus, passing nothing. Uh, Armor 6 Plus, 50k a piece. Dodge, my ball, sidestep, stunty. Again, no right stuff, which is a bit of a shame, but that's okay. Um, they've got that my ball skill, which means they can't hand off or pass the ball. Uh, you have to just kind of either score with them or wait for someone to kill them, um, <laughs> which could be quite interesting. But the fact is, they're an edge 2 plus dodge sidestep stunty piece so anywhere within seven squares as long as i don't roll two ones in a row they are going to be where you want them to be and i love these guys on paper uh and i think i think having them in the backfield to collect the ball and run with them feels too easy because i think it might be it might be too easy to do that and i think you limit yourself with choices Ben. I fully agree. I think I misplayed these guys bad. And same with the Illusionist. I think, because in hindsight, you're totally right that carrying on the Illusionist in the backfield is just a little bit better. It means you can utilize these foxes so much more efficiently. Um, having them just sort of be stuck and then get hit, not ideal. And even the, I used one as like a safety backfield safety piece. Ian just came in and killed it. Um, armor 6 plus sucks. Yeah. <laughs> armor um, 6 plus is a massive negative on these guys even though they've got yeah. even though they start with dodge which is wicked like... yeah i think i'd still have the safety as a, a gnome i think um may, maybe unless you protect but you might you could just protect this a bit better a bit better because movement seven as a safety is quite nice and they're not strength one as well which is quite big there's there's they're noblars i think is what we're saying right they, <laughs> yeah. they're noblars strength boosted noblars who pick up the ball better basically Trip. They dodge anywhere on a two plus. Trips. Do you, and their movement too. Yeah. Do you remember how the 49ers were using uh, Debo? Not yeah. last year, but the year before, where they would just run him in the flat or out the backfield, chuck him the ball and let him run from the pocket, essentially, <laughs> uh, instead of being a fullback. I think this is what happened. I think this is where you want your Woodland Foxes. You want them near the line of scrimmage, in the flat. And just a cheeky short, short handoff, short pass, and then let them explode from there. What you don't want to do is have them in the halfback position and give them the, the ball at the back of the field because they'll get they'll get splatted. Yeah, I think think having them attract attention early on is the thing you don't want. You you definitely want them to to be the when you're going right now. I'm going to look to score. How will I use the fox as opposed to my opponent has spent four turns working out how to kill the fox and as soon as he touched it, it exploded into tiny little pieces. Is there an, yeah, is there an opportunity cost in there as well though? Like if you've got a fox or two foxes floating around, like Ben said, one of them's your wingman, okay, and supporting some, some, some blocks uh, and the other one is there loitering with intent, um, your opponent then has multiple choices, right? Do I try and attack the ball carrier? Or do I try and attack the fox that's a two plus handoff away from from bursting out, and you kind of divide and conquer? Because I think varying those threats is 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 delicious. The the Skaven coach in you coming out there to I shall sacrifice one fox to allow another fox to get the ball and score. <laughs> Some and of you may die. <laughs> yeah, I think that will be a very valid tactic in tournaments with resurrection rosters. I think if you are desperately trying to level up some players I, I i well i just think with armor six plus you may score a few couple of touchdowns with this fox but you're not gonna see well, you're not gonna see a fox living in league this is what we we think like based on the the old beer ball that there is a good chance that as an animal coat as an animal player they won't have a primary skill up uh which is going to be really interesting because if if like like you guys say, I think Ben, you called this on stream too. You were like, you 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 cannot prioritize the the fox. The fox scoring a touchdown has to kind of be your backup plan, uh, because yeah. you're just wasting SPPs unless you score six touchdowns, uh, take a random and get an extra movement or an extra strength. Like that's just fun, uh, but yeah. that's the only thing I think you'd want to do with the foxes anyway. I mean, even if they end up with primary agility access. They've got dodge, they've got sidestep. The only thing you really want is sure feet. And Yeah, or sprint. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's interesting. Sorry, Ben, I feel like I cut you off and you were gonna you were gonna No, uh yeah, I can't remember what I was gonna say there. But um 
Yeah, no. I the going into what you said. Yeah, the no the gnomes just want skills too badly. I think there's a trap to score um, with the even league. I I would I would avoid it at all costs, personally, just because the SPP is so valuable in this team. Hmm. Uh, right. Then you got a couple of treemen, and these treemen look to be standard halfling treemen, uh, without loner in the same way that the halfling roster has, which is magnificent. No, they got picked up a, a couple of times in a stream. And on the replay, they're like, oh, why are you not Loner in the Treeman? And it's like, well, because the, cause this, this Treeman is imbued with a sense of friendship that few find in real life. Uh, and therefore, he's all right. So the Treeman, I, I think the Treeman, normally in a halfling team, it's weird. Well, halflings are weird, right? Because they're kind of like, here's your halfling team and here's your star player that's going to win the game. Um, but like Trip said, uh, with movement two, it, that there's that they're going to get separated potentially you see this trips with undead right the yeah. mummies the mummies being uh, movement three you can separate the pack you the pack gets separated quite yeah, normally easily. normally three turns in you are this is where the mummies are or this is where the trees sort of started and the play has moved on so it, there is by nature with trees you have to spread them out a bit because otherwise you could have just six squares where they just stop and root. Um, but I, and I think you need the two with um, with the name roster because they they give you that throwing option, which, yes, you can only throw the lineman, but it is a very valid play in detail. Um, and they are really your only piece that you can guarantee you can hit well without having to make 15 dodges to do it. And they, they pair Ben with the guard, with the guard boys. Oh, so well with the garden yeah. gnomes um the guarding gnomes giving these guys three dice and the fact that they have loner yeah. that's a that's a wonderful well, oh they're, they're, sorry they don't sorry they don't have loner yeah. that is a a wonderful block on most people at most times so i think this is probably the first pe the first player that doesn't have a knife where multi-block is probably an excellent first choice for a skill because you are going to make yeah. two two die blocks very effectively almost all of the time with these guys and you've already got strong arm like trip said and you've already got stand firm so that's always fun and you've got mighty blow so you just these are trees that are going to get left behind because trees do the name roster isn't all that fast but having that guard piece there is really good the only other thing you could kind of swing for is also giving the trees guard because then when you've got four guard players you've got some pretty uh strong gnomes you go tree guard gnome guard gnome tree you've got a strength seven two strength fours and another strength seven anchoring your front line that is also pretty potent um so i think the trees definitely trips like you said struggle struggle from the movement that all trees do but I feel like they gel with this team really well. I'm not I'm not sure I'd go guard with them on the gnome roster because I think because the rest of the roster other than the gnome other than the fox is quite slow, you can afford and I did it on Monday, that I'll try and dodge away from the tree. Yeah. If I fall over, I fall over. But it's safer it's than a taking a mighty blow hit. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It might not ever catch me up, even if I'm only one square away. So you, yeah. you're probably going to, you're not going to get a loss of base contact. Um, even if a team's playing with lots of big guys, a big guy running into a tree is not a good good way of playing. <laughs> not a good look. Not a good look. Um, yeah, I okay. think with you, Ben, the multi-blow, sorry, the multi-blow, just so on the line, they do as much damage as possible before being stuck and doing nothing. I think that's pretty good. But to get there, you've got to um, spike your SPP on a tree, yeah. on a big guy, which is interesting. So, I mean, let, let's talk about the whole team before I, I go on to my last slide here. I mean, from a developmental point of view, it, this team, I don't know, I don't mean to be disparaging. This team feels like a team that is here to play Blood Bowl. Halflings are a team that are there to just give SPP away while your main act is doing like they are the ultimate supporting act like you've got a couple of trees that are going to do some good stuff and then you've got griff or carla or sheepy boy or deep root and that's the that's the way you're going to win the game you put halflings in the way and your main guy does the stuff this roster feels more so than that 
a, a, a team, a, a Blood Bowl team to, to play Blood Bowl as a team. Yes. I yeah. think it's definitely the, the most serious stunty team we've got. Yeah. As in that you can actually contend and put up a fight. Yeah. Stunty team. In the hands of a good coach. Um, these are wicked. In the hands of an experienced coach, these are going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very dangerous. Yeah. And there's, and there's different ways to play them as well. So that's yeah. going to going to make it a bit of fun you could use the fox as a ball carrier you could use the trickster as a ball carrier you could go for the throwing game you could use gnomes as bombs you could get lucky and not have armor broken every time one of your gnomes goes down i think um yeah i think i think ultimately if we look at this roster the line gnomes dodge is going to be fantastic the beast master ben the guard piece is on there let's you know let's assume they've got general agility and strength as a primary which they won't have oh golly but okay. assuming they have access to any skill possible dodge is probably the first one you take anyway right yeah it is yeah yeah so yeah so take dodge way. take dodge take dodge I, take I, some I, more I, dodge i wouldn't i wouldn't overly mind a cheeky bit of mighty blow if i could take it on the beastmaster but that's just because uh, then it would be really fun to be like tree man might blow and guard boy might blow. that would just be great but dodge is going to keep you alive and it's going to keep your guard piece guarding doing its thing um the illusionist I... oh sorry trips go well, the other thing is when when you start to get some dodge on this roster as well, you're probably going to start with at least three rerolls, probably four. When you start to get dodge built in, you can use those rerolls for some stretch plays, for some shenanigans, and you've got some positionals and players to do that. So I think an 1100 gnome team could be excitingly... Uh, full of fun. I I concur. Uh, the illusionist we've already kind of touched on, but having dodge just really takes them from being a a novelty that's technically worse than a lineman because they can't be thrown uh, to a real power piece. The fox. We don't know what the stat, what the skill ups are going to be, but they're in a great position and they are so fragile. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna turn through foxes. Um, like like Trip said, I don't. I think I think the dream of a level two fox is is pretty bold. <laughs> mm. If a fox gets a level up, it will die on, without a doubt, in turn two or three of the next game. Yeah, I'd save for the skill on it. I yeah, he's got armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Save for the skill. Don't bloat your TV. And if you get there, then well, it's, you you have choice at that stage. Ben will obviously want to give it movement. Uh, I think you always would, to be fair. I think, yeah, I mean... I, I remember what I said I was going to say about the Foxes earlier. I think if anyone on this team is 0-4, to four, it'll be the Foxes. I could actually see them being 0-4. to four. That would be... That'd be quite interesting. Oh, that would be fantastic. As a, as yeah. a, as a Skaven coach, <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. Because uh, you just you just send them forward, watch your part your opponent just panic, uh, yeah, and then you use your illusionist to just dodge through, cheeky quick pass to a fox, and then the fox scores. This is just like tiny Elven Union at that point, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which is quite entertaining. Uh, and we've spoken about the treatment. So really, the the rhythm foxes, I, I we don't know. I mean, even then, leap. But there's no point leaping when you've got stunted two plus dodge. There's just yeah. no point taking a three plus roll without a re-roll when you can just two plus plus for infinity. It uses the same amount of squares, sidestep you've already got. Jump up would be useful, but I think trips you demonstrated this. If you can hit the box, the box is gone. Um yes. which which actually I mean I've I don't believe I've ever hit a fox. But like it, it feels appropriate for what the player is trying to do. Like it's the ultimate glass, not even cannon, just glass wheel. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's an interesting one. So it yeah, could work as well as like a foul piece. But so yeah. from yeah. developing the team, dodge is the easiest way to go. Other cool skill combos, Ben, you've hit on the nail on the head there. Sneaky get and dirty player. Because yeah. you did start to put the boot in in the second half, and I think, I think because you've got the wrestle, because you've got the jump up where it kind of takes away the edge, 
you're, you're going to be able to probably fit the boot in in a couple of different places. And do not forget in this edition, guard gives you plus one to fouling. So not only are you going to be wrestling dudes down, but you are going to have at least two players on the pitch for the first turn um, that are going to be able to just at provide additional supports there as well. So putting the boot in, Ben, with this team, it, it, do you think it's a primary strategy or just a really opportunistic one? I think it's essential. One? Yeah. yeah, I think it's essential, actually. I think I didn't do it enough in the first half. Um, I, I, I think a good game plan for this team is to take it steady. I think I went in too hard. And if I just took it steady, played, you know, protected the ball on an illusionist and just targeted one player, fouled, remove, carry on. Just let them come to you yeah. and just move your way through because I think they really can do it. And getting the that one key positional from the opposition down yeah. that, that can make a mess of your team or can get to your ball carrier is going to then give you the options of what you do with your sidestepping and your trickster skills and your detail. Because if, you've, if you can move around and, and dodge around, you only have to be a couple of players up before all of a sudden you can actually block because there are, yeah. there are advantages to it. Bait them into your trees as well, you know. I'll into the death ball. <laughs> I think the gnome yeah. death star is the probably kind of how you want to do it. Death star with a couple of floating uh, foxes <laughs> on combat air patrol around the side, um, just capping. Um, so the other thing I, I did massively flag is random uh, random generals on the line gnomes. I think is going to be um, potentially really good if if well. It's tough because dodge is always going to be better. But if you can mm -hmm. swing Dauntless on one of them. Yeah, that would be great. That's just... That would, that would be amazing. That's, <laughs> that, that is... Because a one-die wrestle is fabulous. That's a 50% success rate. And that's just magical. That That's kind of the dream. And then with guard, huh? <laughs> When you have two guard as well, like that's it. You can swing yeah. a two die wrestle block, and then it's just absolutely over. So definitely one to consider. I think dodge on your the first time a line, a line gnome levels up. In fact, the first three gnomes they get dodge. Then you can take a random general if you want to. I don't know how quickly that's all going to happen, and I don't know how quickly they're not going to die immediately after. But what we're leading towards here is. The difference of this team, league-wise, where you are going to be, and this is something that definitely came up on the stream, I feel like the gnomes are going to build a load of character when they start getting mm. skills. We saw this in the Bone and Championship, right? Trumpets was just a snotling, but as soon as he got a skill and he had a name, it was the, it was this thing that people wanted to succeed, and you, you you built it up, and you get a line gnome with dodge, you get an illusionist with dodge, you start building up this. Oh, that's a player. That's you know, I don't know what a gnome name is steve the gnome it's just kind of like oh okay steve's pretty good here or you've got prince harry the fox is only one td away from rolling a random uh like a rolling a, a random stat up that's that's exciting this, this, uh, this feels like a really characterful team for league even though they're pretty fragile tournaments ben oh, these are spooky so, assuming they're going to be put into stunty tier you have to start putting uh naught to four of the same skill cap on in your tournaments like every, it, used, <laughs> yeah. it used to be there for amazons and dwarves spamming guard uh and block and then it kind of it was all right but it's not going to be all right anymore you you cannot ben what was it you said like some stunties get 10 skills well yeah 10 dodge awesome <laughs> That being said, when you say saying stuff like you you have the doubles and like yeah you might want road trees or block trees or something, but I think having like a strip ball or dauntless gnome lineman is going to be sick because I think just having one of them and then having four rerolls yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so you especially if options. you've got all the others have got dodge and you can protect those rerolls a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Use the reroll on the on your cage diving yeah. gnome. Like and if, yeah, and if you're playing with a 1.1 or a 1.2 roster, 
That's you're getting 13. all the toys. <laughs> you're, getting, yeah. you're getting every positional, all the rerolls. Probably a star. Probably a star as well. So <laughs> and everyone gets a skill. Let's talk stars. A halfling thimble cup. We briefly talked about this on the stream because we were like, hang about, what can they get then? Um Deep Root, Griff, Grim Iron Jaw, Carlevon Kill, Rumbelow Sheepskin, the Mighty Zug, the White Dwarf, Cindy Pie Whistle, Puggy Bacon Breath, Barrack Farblast. We've seen Rodney Roachbait and probably two more stars, although trips. If the pre-order's going this weekend, hang on, let me add this to my personal dictionary. Thank you very much. Roach bait is now a word. Good job, Google. Um, I mean, th what day is it today? Wednesday. They are running out of time to preview the stars that aren't just going to be available for pre-order. Or oh, trips, do you think the stars are going to be delayed? Well, we've seen the last couple of releases. Everything's been out on the day. And it would feel like a massive fail for a stunty team to not have everything out on, the, out on the day because you would want to be picking them up. The fact that we haven't seen it, I mean, there's still two. I, I wouldn't, I could understand there being one that we get spoiled at the weekend, but even then that's not a great marketing tactic for buy a miniature that you haven't seen until today. We I would saw, hope we'll have one tomorrow. We saw the Yeti <laughs> on, the, on the, the Sunday preview, didn't we? when the Yeti yeah. star was revealed, uh, because we were like, mm -hmm. oh, we can't, the team can't be up yet. And then the Yeti was, was spoiled. And then the following day, they dropped the article saying, hey, here's the stuff. So we've got two potentially stars uh, that at the very least come Saturday, this podcast will be going out Thursday to the Patreons and, and Friday to everybody else. Come Saturday, there'll be a ton of videos coming out on our channel as soon as someone spoils the Spike magazine. Um, we could have two more stars that that are just just spoiled by Guerrilla Miniatures games instead of having a, a a hype article, and that that doesn't that feels like it just doesn't yeah. feel like what they normally do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could, I could, un, I could, I'd understand them almost only having two stars based on where they are and the team and the extra traits and detail. Well, they've but got they've is, got plenty here, right? <laughs> yeah, but that is breaking the mould of what we've seen with every team release. Um, they do get access to some good stars, some stars that you're not going to take. Griff, um, I, I hear he's, he's all right, Trips. It, it, uh, is there anything Griff can't do? Uh, other, <laughs> other than appear in a lot of tournaments because he's getting banned. <laughs> 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 other than unban himself um yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting one so looking at the the star player roster that they've got access to at the moment um rodney i think is going to be wicked i don't i don't remember if we've seen how much he's going to cost but we, I, I can't remember if that's been spoiled or not but his ability with the old fishing rod that he could merrily ben sit in the backfield and be your illusionist yeah that means oh, yeah. he's your quarterback and you've got two illusionists and two foxes that are playing that that midfield zone where they're pushing and they're they're they're, they're causing the threats because i think we kind of saw this is the illusionist can find himself accidentally behind enemy lines quite quickly as i think this happened with you trips where you're like here's my line of norse and then all of a sudden there was a little purple man the other side um yes. and and you know what being a cheeky three plus pass away from being on the other side of the line is is a is 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 a is a actual like oh and I accidentally let a touchdown in, um yeah. so so Rodney being uh, Rodney's going to be a real popular star I think just because of what he does no matter what he costs. Seventy k is his cost, so it was in it, it was that was in the, the spoiler. I couldn't for him. I couldn't remember. I had it in my mind that he was cheap, but I I just thought to myself, surely not. Because <laughs> yeah. so, seventy k yeah. on a gnome team—that's a positional. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. You, you would take him. You could take your normal league starting lineup and a star, and still have money left. So yeah. I don't. I don't want to propagate more star players because obviously people hate star players uh, at the moment. But what we really need is a halfling thimble cup, old world classic, an actual quarterback star. That that's something that these teams don't have. They don't have a thrower. That that's like oh uh, like you know I mean we've got old uh, Gloriel in Elf Town, mm -hmm. uh, yay that video finally uploaded that took what six hours jeez, um, <laughs> it's been a bad internet day in the forest so 
Well, they need a they need a quarterback because a quarterback would be wicked on this team with the foxes and whatnot. Um, however, we don't have that yet. Maybe we'll see that. Other stars here, Griff. Do you think Trips? You played a lot of Griff on and off. Do you think he gels with the the the, the gnome team particularly well? I think if you could get Griff on your roster, I think that would be very scary. <laughs> you made uh, him gel well, I guess. Because yeah. you could you could use the trickster, you could use the beastman to really support. If because if if you're going with Griff, you are everything is about Griff and everything supports Griff, and this team would support Griff really well for two turns, and then Griff would run away from them. Yeah, that's not that's not unfair. The white dwarf. I assume you'd also take the apothecary for Griff. Well, the well. star players can't use apothecaries. Oh yeah, they can't, can they? There no. you go. That shows my game knowledge. I never take stars, so. Uh, I mean, Cindy is is always useful. Like, just I think the... Cindy's pretty good on this, yeah. especially if you're playing passively and sort of letting them come to you. Having Cindy in the middle of your death star sounds pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Zog's cheap beef. I like Grim Iron Jaw because you've got a couple of um, a couple of guard pieces, and he actually starts with multi block block. So actually, a tree guard boy, tree guard gnome, Grim guard gnome tree front line is is pretty exceptional it's a strength seven hit that's a couple of strength four hits from from uh, from grim and then you mop up with the guard boys uh and a bit of fouling that's a pretty offensive front line uh, the problem is with grim is he's, he's 200k and for 230 or whatever you get carla who's just fantastic a strength four blodger yeah um yeah and then of course you've got uh the all teams you've got grack helmet and acorn acorn i think teaming up with the garden gnomes is a really fun prospect for theme and execution frenzy claws and with a garden gnome or two goes up to strength three and then is rolling dauntless anyway so you end up with a reroll yeah on dauntless yes yeah basically <laughs> auto dauntless uh auto yeah. dauntless with the crazy squirrel that that, that that's just actually pretty good yeah I that's that's your ball that's your ball sacker that's 150k will get you roach bait and acorn yeah that's pretty good isn't it that yeah. that's a, I... that's 1100 basically 1100 1150 will get you the gnome team that ben ran on stream with 13 gnomes and a frenzy claw star and the guard and uh old roach bait that yeah. feels so much fun it, it may not be optimal it may be better just i'll oh, just run deep root because three trees are better than one tree uh which again not a terrible thing to have you know three t's three trees hitting with two guard support again that is a dirty front line and being able to feed people to, to tree man tree man plus two is pretty nice um technically might be the better way to play but having access to acorn with some guard and then having the fisherman there's some real play potential with this team I'd, yeah, I'd, I think my favourite star, having played with a few of the halfling stars, would be Carla for this team because I think the the ability to smash open a hole is key to get things through, and Carla will give you an awesome safety blitzer, and you'll have other pieces you can pull in around that. So I think she would threaten both ways. She's a little bit more expensive, but. I don't think you're going to struggle to get a gnome roster that can free up 210k. No, I mean, Ben was running 13 gnomes and um, based on a 60k reroll cost, we had four rerolls. It was like 980 or 990 or something. Yeah. So for a tournament, if you want to go with 12 gnomes and two stars for 1100, that's that's still 14 players um, yeah. with four rerolls. And then you chuck leader yeah. on one of the illusionists or something assuming they have some kind of pass access just because you've got a double to spend or a single to spend because if you run in stunty you've probably got eight skills to choose um it, it's that's five re-rolls you've got dodge on a couple of guys you've got like you said ben dauntless or strip ball on one other guy uh and then well if you have acorn you don't need it so yeah, yeah exactly you can have two potential ball sackers yeah um, it, it's potent oh no. uh, sorry 
a note with a with acorn if you do buy your trees for your tree men make sure you get one gnome one and one halfling one because doesn't the halfling one come with acorn <laughs> it, yeah. do, it does yeah. it does that in mind. <laughs> i mean to be fair if you pick up a gnome roster the correct thing to do will be to use a goose as your acorn um yeah true. or a badger yes. or a badger you know you can you can you know mix it up a bit you love one spare yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just go you put the goose in Good there point. and you just play the ultimate indie game on the blood bowl pitch um yeah i mean first thoughts to kind of to wrap up guys we we, we got one game with gnomes we're going to run another one on monday and then uh, the monday after that it's going to be halflings versus gnome in some kind of tournament format so that we can see some star players i don't know we might try and sneak uh roach bait in uh on monday if i can print a model out um mm -hmm. as i think that that might be the next thing to do but i, I do kind of want to see well, i think ben you did a good job piloting them for the first time because you definitely warmed up to them for the second half yeah i'd like to have a second game now i yeah. sort of know what they do and play them a bit differently yeah i mean you had all of like five hours of these are the rules for them to figure it out as well, yeah, well true. <laughs> ben was like just plowing away at work trying to make sure that he could get to the stream <laughs> yeah 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 work turn up paint the team then figure yeah. out how to play yeah. it that no one's thinking. ever played before so what do they do yeah it's an interesting yeah. one yeah. um I think, you know, I, I, I love the look of the team. It is silly, but Blood Bowl is silly. Blood Bowl's very silly. Um, there's a lot of non grim dark people that are looking at that team and being like, what is this? This is interesting, which we love. Yeah. And on the pitch, they're interesting. This is a new challenge for Blood Bowl, which, I mean, more Blood Bowl is more better. This is, this is new. They've got a 30th team into the game, and it doesn't play like any other team there. That's... Yeah, that's what we asked for, right? When we were thinking of new teams to add, like we we obviously had our you know, squigs, 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 Slanesh, squigs, but we we did also say like Stunties, maybe Zinch or something, but something that's a different Stunty, and this is what we this is what it is. It's a very very different Stunty, and I think you can see by the talk, there's a lot of people who haven't played Stunty yet looking at gnomes, mm, going, exactly. yeah, I'd, I'd like interest. to play that, and you can win, yeah, yeah, that's... well, yeah, you can win. Like it was yeah. a, a two two one lost to Norse is is not yeah spoiler alert too late uh, which is North being one of the strongest million TV teams yes. that there is yeah <laughs> is is a big testament and um, I think Milton yeah. suggested that we ran Skaven against them and I kind of sort of said well we'll we'll, we'll leave it up to um we'll leave it up to YouTube to to choose because I think I think bad matchups for for gnomes. Having not seen a huge amount of their play, so I, I could be massively wrong here, but as a Skaven coach, I look at this roster and I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm going to get four TDs here because that, that's <laughs> just kind of what I think. But like, there's not a lot to stop you. In There's not yeah. a lot to... Uh, which we kind of saw when, when Trips made, was able to break away with his speedy, drunken movement six Norseman. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, if you get a breakthrough... There's, there's not a lot you're going to be able to do to stop, which is why I think you're right, Ben. I think playing that kind of soft defense and kind of ganging up is the right thing to do. I love mm. it. I think this is wicked. Um, the only thing we haven't done is touch on sevens, but we will definitely touch on sevens with gnomes at some point. Uh, it's just too interesting to see how they play in full. But yeah, any last predictions for the spike on Saturday? I think really we'll... I'm, I'm re really hoping that the Garden Leagues is some kind of fun stunty league stuff. That would be great because that would be good fun. That that would be something that not just would be great fluff in a spike would be something that would people would genuinely use. So that would be great. Um, and it'll be fascinating to see what the um, uh, All Star Gnome team looks like in terms of uh, <laughs> <laughs> what on earth that has other than. 10 block pieces, uh, 10 dodge pieces. Yeah, so predictions and hopes. I mean, I do want another two star players just because it's just fun. I want them to, I want them to be like Rodney. I want them to be useful. I want them to kind of add a thing to a team um, without being hack phlegm. Uh, and yeah, I do mean, you know, I love that the gnome, like, you know, I love the league stuff. It's just absolutely wonderful. It makes me so happy. It will never get used, but it's just, I just love reading rules, uh, which is why Death Zone is probably one of my favorite things they've ever done. Yeah. Um, but having that is great. I I'm still looking forward to the fluff. There better be that page with four, uh, four well known gnome teams with a little bit yeah. of fluff, just a two paragraph 
Ooh, ooh, maybe my team could be based on this one. I just, I love that. That is just my favourite little one pager. It means nothing for the game, but it just helps you imbue a little bit of character, which is what this gnome team in league is going to be brilliant because they're not going to be the most winningest. They're not going to be awful. Well, they're going to struggle, but that's okay because they're a yeah. stunty team. But they're going to win some games. They're going to draw a load of games, I reckon. I think this is going to be the most drawingest team available. Because <laughs> yeah. you've got, you got some sticky defense with all that wrestle. And you've got surprising offense with the tricksters and the foxes. It, it's going to be a case of like, God, it took me some work to get that touchdown. And now I accidentally double blitzed illusionist and foxes to the other side. And then they managed to just sneak in the fox take a two plus dodge two plus pick up and ran it in from eight squares out to score a touchdown because i left a slight gap in the line there's going to be some tricksy plays you can't stop and there's going to be some um some some yolo wrestle plays that are just going to rob you of a touchdown which i think is going to be a one one a one one regular i think against gnomes and that as chat pointed out you know drawing with a stunty team is a win yeah that's very true and I'm absolutely here for it. Um, right. Any more for any more then, lads? I think I'm good. No, well, I just want to say a massive thank you to both of you for helping to get the Monday Night Blood Bowl stuff all sorted. Um, it's all right. We're not, we're, not, we're not there yet. There's things we're going to continue improving, but we have, well, apparently a stable platform and the audio is good. It's starting to come together really well. And hopefully every Monday night we can play some Blood Bowl. It's going to be gnomes for a little while. Uh, and then we can start rotating in new teams and 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 just having a really good time playing some Blood Bowl. And it's wonderful. Thank you to the 300 or so people that tuned in to us live. That was wicked to see. Um, and a massive thank you to all of you out there who support us in any way by coming to our tournaments. We've got Dorset Dungeon Bowl coming up in a couple of weeks. We've got our team tournament in summer. Uh, or just supporting us on Patreon or members or liking and subscribing and doing all that stuff that we try not to mention too often. Um, it's just awesome. So thank you very, very, very much. We're going to wrap up. We'll be soon. We'll be back soon with more bubble content, hopefully tomorrow with a star player release. My money is actually not on it, but we will see. Anyway, we're going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more bubble content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.